Uh, how's it going, everyone? If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for being here. If you're watching this on Twitch live, well, thank you also for being here. It would mean the world to me if you could subscribe to the YouTube channel. Give this video a thumbs up. Maybe even leave a comment. Let me know which of these two decks we're going to look at you're most excited about. Um, this is the new starter kit that came alongside the Wilds of Eldraine set release. I'm excited to look into this because it looks like they've kind of updated some of the packaging. Um, so maybe they've updated some of the thought processes behind these two decks as well. Um, so in this box set, so this is essentially they designed these to give new players a good starting point. There's two decks in here. They're both ready to play. They potentially go well against each other and they're fun to play head-to-head. Uh, -head. But in some of the starter kits of the past, the decks have been kind of clueless or directionless, so it's a little bit difficult to determine whether or not these are going to be good to go up against without looking at them. But they've definitely updated some of the packaging and design of this product. Um, this is usually retails for about 15 to $25 and is very, very good. So if you're looking to get into it or you're looking to buy someone a, a kit to get started, this is very strong. It also comes with a code, two codes actually, to unlock these two decks in Magic Arena. So if you're trying to introduce Magic to a player that doesn't play a ton of tabletop in-person stuff this is a really great product because they can then get these cards in arena they can learn how to play the deck play it a few times um, and then next time you see them in person uh, they can play or next time they have the opportunity they can play the deck in paper that they've been practicing on arena it's also pretty decent because usually there's at least one or two headline rares in these decks so having those cards on arena usually tend to help anyway it looks like we've got silverback elder um for the green and white deck and then we've got sarkin soul of flame uh in from the march of the machine aftermath in the blue and red deck so black has been left off of the list this time so far, none of the starter kits have had three color decks in them. They've all been two color decks. And so one color always has to be left out. This time around, it is black. Um, you definitely have to check out our older starter kit videos to find out which ones were left out of the other ones because I can't remember. Uh, the last one we did was the Lord of the Rings starter kit. And it was subpar to say the least. The decks were kind of aimless and, and really struggled to put together a real game plan and a win condition. So hopefully the design and theory behind these two decks goes a little bit more in depth. I feel like Wizards always has the unfortunate task of designing products that, especially in this case, designing starter decks that both work well have cards that people want in them but also go over as much of the game's mechanics as possible because they want people to learn how to play magic using these products so it makes sense that their decks kind of include a bunch of mechanics that don't necessarily mesh well with one another because they're trying to overexpose players um so this whole thing I thought this was going to be a closed box, but it's just a weird little slide out thing. Usually, okay, here we go. Usually they have the cards on the front of the box, like packaged like this. So you can see, the, oh, you get two cool foils um, on the shelf. But for some reason they went with uh, this thing, which kind of just, it looks like a box to carry both the decks, but it's not actually a box. It's just like a little cardboard frame. So a ton of wasted materials here. Um, other things that come in this box are two deck boxes, quote unquote. Calling these deck boxes is probably the most 
um, generous thing you could do. It's a little piece of cardboard that folds into a closed box. Um, hilariously, these do not fit the decks in them once you've sleeved them. So the only way to use these as deck boxes is if you don't sleeve your cards, which anyone spending a dollar or more on cards is doing these days. Uh, Benjamin Wheeler from Loading Ready Run is the only person I know know of that uh, classically does not sleeve their cards. So what we're going to do... Okay, actually, sorry. The other thing that comes in here is a play guide, which is basically just a little booklet that kind of runs down the fundamentals of Magic the Gathering. What your board kind of looks like, how to start a game, uh, and then it kind of describes some lingo. So you've got library, hand, battlefield, graveyard. It goes into game actions, so uh, what it's like to tap and untap, uh, casting spells, attacking and blocking, how to read a magic card. So this is really cool. And then it's got a link to the keyword glossary there with the QR code. Uh, this is really awesome. And then it kind of goes into power and toughness, expansion symbols, uh, parts of your turn. And then you've got some advertisements in the back here. And then you've got a little bit of FAQs, which are usually interesting questions, but not really questions that another person can't answer. Most of the time, it's not two people that have never played magic trying to sit down and learn. So a lot of the times, um, booklets like this are useful to take home and kind of read over or remind yourself if you don't want to ask the questions. But generally, a lot of the easy questions that are answered in this book can also be answered by the person across the table from you. So take advantage of other players' knowledge. Nobody likes explaining things as much as Magic the Gathering players. Um, so yeah, that's what comes in the box. And then you've got two full decks here which we'll take a look at in a second. And then this, yeah, this thing is so weird. I don't know why they would rather have this displayed on a shelf versus the two decks and the two headline cards. And then on the back here, we've got uh, codes. I'll give one of the codes away at the end of this video. Um, and you can redeem these two decks for yourself on Arena if you play Arena. Um, which one are we doing first? Let's look at the white green deck first. So we'll put this one aside for a second. And we'll look at this one. So this is white green. Generally, a lot of like life gain mechanics, uh, enchantments are a big thing in white and green. So we're just going to take that out for one quick second. So the headline card of the white green deck is Boon Bringer Valkyrie, which is a very good card. There's um, a really cool mechanic from March of the Machine called Backup, where when a card enters the battlefield, you can supply its abilities to another card um, that you already have on the battlefield. This is pretty interesting, and it makes for a lot of really cool gameplay. Boonbringer Valkyrie uh, cares about lifelink, so I have a feeling that we're looking at some lifelink synergies in this deck. But again, in previous starter kits, the synergies have kind of fallen apart, so I'm not holding my breath. This is a nice card to have. It's a nice headline card. Um, when this card comes down in play, your opponent has to worry about it uh so that's pretty cool the next card in this deck is in the trenches which is a an anthem effect that lets you um exile something so hold something hostage which is really neat and then we've got silverback elder which has some life gain in it so these are going to be the headlines of the deck uh, Boonbringer Valkyrie is the master of it and then Silverback Elder is very powerful 
Um, whenever one or more 1-1 one -one counters are put on Dust Legion Duelist, draw a card. This ability triggers. So maybe we're doing some counters and life gain synergies in here. We'll have to keep going and see. Siege Veteran. So this is more counters. Uh, Ancient Imperial Soars, more counters. Quest Quarian Beast is counters. Simian Simulacrum uh, is also counters. So maybe they've just said, screw it, we're going to do counters. Um, so those are all the one ofs. Generally, they do rares in one ofs because they want to kind of spread the wealth a bit. And again, like I tried to describe, they're trying to showcase as much of Magic the Gathering as they can in one deck, which is admittedly a hard thing to do. Um, so I can't give them too much grief for that. But um, then we get to the sets. So we've got uh, two copies of Recruitment Officer, which is a powerful card that lets you look at the top cards of your library. We've got two of Storm the Seed Core, two uh, Samite Herbalists, two Sigiled Sentinels, uh, one Mesa Cavalier. Oh no, these just got mixed up in the order for some reason. We got three Cavaliers. So this is a little bit of more gain life. And then we've got three Cooped Up, which is from Wilds of Eldraine. This is the first new card that has been included here. So this is just um, a lockdown exile effect, a little bit of control. We've got uh, Iridescent Blade Masters, so keeping with that counters. Uh, Chomping Kavu, which is kind of just an aggro attack. Pretty bad card. Uh, we've got Magnagoth Sentry, which is a decent uh, blocker for sure. 4-4 four, four with reach for 4 is not too bad. And then we've got a couple of combat tricks. So we've got Giant's Growth and Titanic Growth. We've got Broken Wings for removal and dealing with artifacts and enchantments. We've got Fairgrounds Trumpeteer. Um which kind of helps spread around the counters. And then we've got a playset of Blossoming Sands and then Forests and Plains, which is not bad. Blossoming Sands is one of the worst, but it's also got life gain. Um, so it kind of goes with everything. Just preliminarily, I think these... Oh, I don't even have it zoomed in, right? I think these decks, this deck is far better than the Lord of the Rings starter kit. We've got a lot of counter matter stuff in green with some interactions. So we've got uh, some kill spells and some combat tricks. I think some of the stuff like Sentry... Kavu and Blade Master. Um, those immediately get pulled out. If you're looking to edit these decks, I would pull those out immediately. Um, Cavalier is bad, but it's also not terrible. Um, I would pull out those Sentinels. I would not pull out Herbalist, although there's not a lot of ways to tap it in this set, in this deck. So I feel like this, the Simeon Simulacrum is also decent. I would pull out four, four more lands and put in the, or actually I'd pull out eight more lands and put in the better dual lands. I would take these out. Um, if you need to play with them, I, it's fine, but I would pull them out and put in the slow or fast, uh, untap lands, but that's not bad. We're looking at a 60 card playable deck and I would only pull out four cards and all of their copies. So like 
we're talking about eight cards all together plus some change up the land base a little bit like that's that's a lot better than the previous versions that had too many different things going for them i think everything else is obviously not as finely tuned as possible because you're looking at a situation where they're not going to give you four of the really expensive cards for some reason even though these cards aren't really worth all that much like If you're building this deck to play and be competitive, you want four beast callers. Um, you want three or four Imperiosaurs. You want two El Silverback Elders. So it's a little bit difficult to kind of sit here and say, oh, this deck is good. It's just better than previous versions of the starter decks. So I think that's a big boon. Um, no pun intended. That's a big boon for this set so far. Out of the two decks, the first deck is pretty decent. It's going to be fun to play. You're going to be really excited when you draw um, those bigger cards. And I think that that's going to add a lot of fun to your gameplay session. It's also like not a bad deck synergy-wise. They're trying to do mostly counters. In addition to the counters, there's some life gain stuff, so it still kind of dips its toe into kind of the classic versions of white and green, but it has a, a closer synergy with the ability to focus more on counters than anything else. Um, I, I think I would just simply like Wizards to put more powerful cards in here or at least pull play sets of the cards that the deck is built around i know that this is supposed to be a a cheap product quote unquote cheap and affordable product to kind of dip your toes into magic the gathering um but it costs them zero money to put uh four of the good cards than four of the three of the bad cards they all cost the same to print um so this is the blue and red deck which i'm kind of excited about because i like spell slinger decks although i have had this weird renaissance with is that card damaged it is so I'm, i just noticed with the light shining on my Boonbringer Valkyrie that the bottom of it is like super dinged, which is a bummer, but it's not a chase card anyway. So, so this is the um, red blue deck and it is helmed by Tyrant of Care Ridges, which is a really awesome card from Brothers War. Uh, when it ETBs, it deals four damage to any target, which is really powerful, especially in that mid to late game. And then it has fire breathing like most dragons do. Uh, which is cool. So that's our headline character. And then we've got Sarkin Soul of Flame, uh, which makes your dragons cost dragons casting cost cheaper. Um, and then Sarkin also mimics dragons that come into the battlefield. So this is a very powerful card. And I'm starting to think that this blue red deck is just going to be dragon focused, or at least I hope it is. Um, then we've got Shivan Devastator, which is a fantastic versatile dragon. Um, this can come in on turn one or turn two, sorry. Or it can come in on turn 12, and it just gets bigger the more mana you put into it. Uh, so very powerful stuff. Then we've got Rage Fire Hellkite, which is a great dragon. We've got Aether Channel Channeler, which is an interesting card to include here. This can bounce or make a bird or draw. Ingenious Prodigy, which is our first... Uh, Wilds of Eldraine card. So this guy has a bunch of counters and can you can remove those counters to draw cards. So maybe they're going to do blue is draw and red is dragons. 
Uh, immediately, no, actually. We get four uh, Dragon Wing Glider, which is probably one of the worst pieces of equipment made in the last two years. We get Godric Cloaked Reveler from Wilds of Eldraine. So this guy's cool because he becomes a dragon as well. Um, if you can trigger the celebration. So that's really powerful. And then we've got uh, Coligan Warmonger. Whenever Coligan attacks, look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal a dragon card from among them and put it into your hand. So that's pretty good too. And we've got Archive Dragon, which is from Wilds of Eldraine. This is a fun little scry and ward dragon. We've got another Warmonger and another Archive Dragon. Oh, we got three Warmongers. That's not bad. Dragon Whelp, which is a fine card. It's not good. It was okay and limited for this set uh, for Dominaria, but it it's not good. It's four mana for a 2-3 flying. Um... And then it, it has fire breathing that can blow itself up if it goes too far. Uh, we've got Witch Stalker Frenzy. Oh, we've got the weird misplaced. So we got three Witch Stalker, three Dragon Whelps, which is not bad. Witch Stalker Frenzy is a three red instant. Uh, cost one less to cast for each creature that attacked this turn, and it deals five damage to target creature. Um, so this is pretty decent if you're in the aggro path. You can make this pretty cheap. You can make it cost one red if you attack with three things. It's it's pretty good. I like that card. I like the inclusion here too. Then we've got one copy of Shivan Branch Burner, which is a 4-4 with Convoke with Flying and Haste. The haste on this card is the only reason why it's any good. Otherwise, it's just way overpriced and you have to Convoke it. Uh, Quick Study, which is a nice little addition from Wilds of Eldrain. That's a nice little draw card. Um, here's an interesting one. We've got Stasis Field, um, which turns Enchanted Creature into an O2 with Defender and loses all of their abilities. This is probably one of the worst Stasis cards, enchantments made in the last little while. There's so many better ones in recent sets. Um, Tamiyo's Completion, um, Nameless Witness or whatever, Witness Protection, uh, including Stasis Field in here is a bit of a joke, but it's not, it's not the worst. I, I almost wouldn't take it out. And then we've got another new card that's Storm Keld Prowler. Uh, whenever you cast a spell with five mana or greater, put two counters on Storm Keld Prowler. You get a full playset of these and they're kind of Meh, I would take these out for sure. I don't know why you would want to build your Prowler up when you can spend that mana doing other things. Then we get, um, it looks like three of Lightning Strike. Fantastic card. Always put Lightning Strikes in your red decks. Uh, those are great. And then we've got two Rock Hunters, which is just a 3 1 with Reach. I would take those out as well. That card was consistently a 6-5 for me in Limited. The Prowler, I think the Prowler is great in Limited. It's People are going to undervalue it, so you're going to pick them up late. Um, people don't see it coming, so they don't remove it quick enough. I think it's a good Limited card. It's just not a good Constructed card. I'd rather have four more draw cards than than that. And then we get four a full playset of Swift Flutter Cliffs, which is just the uh, blue red version of the lands we got in the other deck. These are just the come in tapped gain a life lands, which isn't super great for this deck. This deck wants to move a little quickly. Um, again, I would put those on the cut list and swap out for better tap lands or for better dual lands. Um, I like this deck quite a bit. I think that there's enough interaction. There's enough interaction. Lightning strikes are good. I would have liked maybe two branch burners 
I think Witch Stalker Frenzy is a nice addition. Uh, Dragon Whelp is probably the weakest of the red stuff. Warmonger is crucial if you're going to be playing dragons. Um, and then you've got Devastator, Hellkite. This is probably the most befuddling addition to this whole deck. I don't... I don't get it. This is one of the worst pieces of equipment made in years. Um, so that's going in the replace pile. Godric is a really cool card. Um, if you can trigger the celebration, it synergizes with the dragons. Obviously, Sarkin uh, synergizes with the dragons. Tyrant of Care Ridges is pretty good. But but it says dragon. Oh, I get a dragon wing. Glad I never even thought of that. No, I refuse. No. Not happening. Um, I would consider replacing Stasis Field with, you know, one of the the other lockdown enchantments. There's there's quite a few good ones. There's even some good ones in Wilds of Eldraine. The fact that they pulled the pretty weak one. I've cast worse cards than a five mana four four with haste. I mean. True, but you should stop casting worse cards than that. I think Quick Study is great. I would have liked some of the cheap blue consider type cards. Uh, Archive Dragon is decent. It goes with the dragon theme. Um, some interesting additions like Ingenious Prodigy. This is more... These are more like draw card synergies, which I guess is kind of what blue does in tandem with red it's you want to cast blue spells and you want to cast red creatures generally so i like this deck build quite a bit i think this one's going to be super interesting to play um some sleight of hands would have been amazing i think um if you took out i honestly i'd rather have four sleight of hands than four Stormkeld Prowlers. I think you overload the blue with what blue is trying to do. Draw cards. You can leave in the Archive Dragons, which is just like a cheeky little addition to the Dragon Synergies. Leave in the Enchant Lockdowns. Leave in the higher cost draw cards. Replace these four with um, Sleight of Hands. And I think you've got a, a pretty neat blue lineup replacing the four tap lands is just um, a good idea but it's not super necessary uh, the rock hunters are pretty uniquely odd they just kind of stand out they don't do anything with the rest of the deck um, the only decent thing about it is that it's a three power with reach so it can block some powerful flyers but ultimately it can't do that super well i would replace these two with um some extra copies of like godric or shivan devastator because you're going to want to play shivan devastators early and late so i know it's a mythic but it's worthless like the card's worth what like a couple bucks maybe The base version of this deck is, or this card is worth $4. So, like, why not put two more of these in there than the Rock Hunters? Or, uh, I mean, Hellkite's not super great. I wouldn't put more than one copy of Hellkite in there. I would put multiple copies of Godric in this deck, though. I think you want to have Godric in play and only having one copy of it in this deck means you're not going to draw it that often. 
Um, yeah, so I think, and this is obviously just the weirdest inclusion I've ever seen. I would replace these seven cards plus four lands. Again, I would maybe include four other, four more lands, replace eight lands total, put the slow and the fast dual lands in there. Um, but those can get a little pricey, so I understand why Wizards chose to put the worst dual lands in here. Um, yeah, so that's pretty good. Again, much like our green white deck, I'm only looking to replace a couple cards to make this deck good. In the previous versions of the starter decks, there was a lot of confusion, um, and I would have replaced half the deck in order to make the deck good. I think this deck on its own could be really fun. With a few tweaks, it could be actually uh, really powerful. So it's interesting that they made um, the Tyrant of Care Ridges the feature on this deck, because I think Sarkin it should be the feature. This card is really, really cool and really, really fun to build around. Um, they did the same thing with the white and green deck where I think that they would... Um, actually, you know what? Maybe not. Maybe there isn't a... I mean, any of these green cards would be better because we're talking about adding counters. I would have made Aquarium Beast Caller the headline of this deck. Something that, you know, is relatively affordable that you can put a full playset in. Um, again, if you're playing decks like these in real life, if you're building decks like these, you want to put play sets of the cards you're building around having just one copy of a build around uh is just not gonna work for you it's not gonna happen uh you're gonna draw it once every three or four games and that's not good enough for something that you've built the entire synergy of the deck around So that's my take on these new starter kits. It's definitely worth it. Like I've said in all the previous uh, reviews for these starter kits, I think all of these kits are worthwhile. Um, I think that having a couple of decks ready to go be like, hey, let's play. Let me teach you how to play. Um, it's also pretty decent because nothing is super expensive in there. Um, if you want to like have some travel decks and not bring along your expensive constructed decks, having these just that you can toss in a backpack or whatever to take on a trip or camping or what have you, like it's worth the money no matter which way it shakes out. Also a great gift for someone who's interested in playing magic. Um, I would suggest avoiding it if you're buying it for someone who's a magic enthusiast. For the most part, the cards that are any good in these decks, they already have four copies of or more. Um, they're also just a touch under-designed. So it's just going to be frustrating for anyone who plays a lot of magic to get these because they're immediately going to want to swap out those cards uh, for something better. Um, but yeah, I think it's definitely worth it. I'm confused by the packaging. Again, they put this like weird flat poster that I thought was like a box set. It like slid in here and it had the cards slotted into the back. But when you look at the package all together, it looks like this is a nice little like travel box or something, but it's not. It's just a, a frame. Um, so yeah, I think this is really worth it. It's really strong. Um, it's a really great place to start. I think that you're going to, whoever receives this is going to appreciate it. 
If you're buying this for someone who doesn't have a big collection or doesn't have any made decks or wants to learn how to play, definitely, definitely a solid choice. Um, and I will wrap it up there. Thank you so much for for watching this. If you're watching this on Twitch right now, I appreciate you being here live. If you're watching this on YouTube later, what are you doing? Come hang out with us on Twitch. Just twitch.tv slash herb. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for also being here. Uh, it would mean the world to us if you could subscribe and like this video. Maybe comment on which of these two decks you'd rather play. Uh, or some additions and subtractions that I may have gotten wrong or right or whatever. Or just say hi. Uh, love talking to y'all in the comments. And I will leave you guys with a little bit of a treat. First one to snag this code uh can get redeem these two decks in arena for free i appreciate you i hope you have a good one i hope you see cute dogs and eat something delicious i will talk to you guys later